What's going on everybody? Chase on two wheels here at Triumph in Roswell. In front of me I've got their 2024 Triumph Speed 400. I did not get to go to the press launch on this bike. I am so excited to try this out and see what the beginner class now has in it. I'm super excited for this one guys. It's a first ride so stick around to see if this is a purchase or a pass. And for now we got to see what it looks like and we got to see what it sounds like. So that's what it looks like and that's what it sounds like now before we get going we got to pay some bills with a sponsor real quick what's going on guys this first start is brought to you by fume now i know you guys are thinking cold turkey might be great on sandwiches but for breaking bad habits we need something a little less feathery now forget about those magical solutions from your eccentric uncle's backyard circus. We're diving into something grounded, natural, and yeah, a bit more sane. Fume isn't about zapping your brain with weird mind voodoo to break a habit, it's about transforming it. Imagine peeling away the bad layers of a habit like an onion, but without the tears. Fume is that innovative, award-winning flavored air device that champions the good. No electronics, just pure flavored air goodness and all natural flavors that make ditching bad habits not only easy, but enjoyable. And you guys know how much I love magnets, right? This design is genius. So it's got movable parts, magnets for fidgeting, and trust me, it is a lifesaver for stress. So good. They recently launched Base, which is a weighted stand that holds your fume with, you guessed it, magnets. How cool is that? Now, growing up with asthma, I've always been passionate about healthy products, and that's why fume resonated with me. It's not necessarily about what it takes away, but more what it adds. A easy, breathable world where you're in control. Now, the first flavor I tried was this crisp mint. Now, for the flavoring, I want you guys to imagine what your breath feels like after you chew like mint gum. That's what this tastes like. It's absolutely fantastic, and I really love the dark wood base that this one has on it. Big fan. Switching to Fume isn't just easy, it's a game changer. With over 150,000 customers finding a healthier path, I believe it's time we all considered accelerating humanity's breakup with destructive habits. You guys can pick up a journey pack today at tryfume.com slash two wheels. And don't forget to use code two wheels for 10% off your lungs and maybe even your bike will thank you. And guys, you can either scan that QR code or head to the description, I've got a link for you there. And let's all make a positive shift to the healthier side together. But now, let's get back to the first ride. Okay, let's get on the speed. 400. Shout out to Quad Lock. Boom, phone's in the front. All right, guys, so I had to watch our foreign correspondent dually go out to do the press launch of this along with the Scrambler 400. It was in Spain, it looked like a great time, I was jealous. But today I get my retribution and we are back on this bike and now I get to try it out. Let's get her going. Um, so guys, I'm 5'10", I got a 32 inch NT, I'm gonna hold the, the brake here. 
I've got very bent legs. So if you're a shorter rider, you are going to be fine on this bike. We'll see how it is for a 510, 32-inch inseam guy as we get going. Uh, I can hit the info button and I can cycle through the info, but we have no modes to worry with today. So I don't got to worry about not being in the right mode. All right, guys. Y'all don't uh, click on these to hear me sit on bikes and talk. We actually ride the bikes here. Also, if you guys are into Discord, we've got a Discord full of motorcycle enthusiasts that we'd love you to be a part of. We discuss first rides and all types of stuff, and I'm actually in it these days. <gasps> Nobody coming, and we get to go? This is great. Speed 100 away. <laughs> Tracks control, <laughs> light already blinking. I love it. Alrighty, guys. So. What we're on today is actually Triumph Motorcycle's most affordable bike in their entire class, and it looks to be a really fun addition to the beginner bike market. That is where I want to see how this thing does today, because I am so excited that the beginner bike class is getting so good. There's so many fantastic motorcycles and I'm hoping this is an addition to that. Now guys, before we get too far into this first ride, I do want to note, as you guys might be able to see on the dash up there, we have a bike with 36 miles on it. And one of the cool things that this bike is doing that I'm realizing is it will not let you over rev this bike because it's in its break-in. So I love that it's doing that, but if there are uh, performance limitations today, that is why the bike is not going to let me you know rev it all the way to the max that it could i don't think that'll really come into too much issue until we get to the highway but i did want to give you guys that info from the get-go i'm not mad at triumph i appreciate them doing that and just keeping their bike safe during break-in but it is something to take note of for this test Alrighty, guys it's a first ride let's talk about body position on the speed 400. uh we've got a big seat guys and it is plush seat is very comfortable and my legs are only slightly bent back and my body and my upper half is straight up with a just a smidge lean forward i've got like a medium to wide handlebar here this position is incredibly comfortable uh, i don't think you're going to be doing any like touring on this bike but the body position you are going to be feeling solid the whole time and i think even for a taller rider I think you would actually fit really well into these little uh, grooves in the gas tank. Uh, so they're going to be a fantastic bike for shorter riders, but also a good bike for taller riders because they got plenty of spaces for their legs to go. And I don't think you're going to be feeling cramped up. All right, guys, this is about where I change modes, but I don't have any modes today, so nothing to change. We are in the one mode that this bike has. Uh, but let's talk about the engine real quick. We are looking at a 398 cc single. The power that this engine is putting out is, I believe, 39 horsepower with around 27 foot pounds of torque, which is pretty around the area you would expect out of a uh, lower CC beginner bike area uh, or just a low CC bike in general. Power numbers are nothing really crazy, but I'm interested to see like how it progresses, especially on the highway. But as far as city performance, uh, this is where I feel like it's going to be the sweet spot for this bike. It's very light, it's very maneuverable, and the lightweight of the bike, the bike weighs less than 400 pounds, I think it's like 392 or something like that. With a bike being that light, I'm on this upward body, this uh, taller body position. I do feel like I have a lot of control over this bike. I can kind of move it around all over the place. I will say it doesn't feel like it turns in quickly though. I'm just trying to figure out how to explain to you guys like, it's not that the bike's not maneuverable. It's I'm, I'm having a hard time describing like what it feels like. I just want it to, if it's so light and I got a good handlebar situation, I expect it would just like fly left and right. But I guess because of the wheelbase, it's not reacting exactly like I would expect to. It's just not as flicky as one would expect at a sub 400 pound bike with big handlebars. Now, as far as power delivery goes, the power is actually pretty great for the city. If you guys aren't familiar, a single, the style engine that this is, it's very punchy and it gives you a lot of power down low in the revs. But I do notice that the power does die off quite a bit with this single once you get it revving out. You can tell all the power is down low. You start revving it out and you just get less and less power. So typically that's pretty good for the city because 
like I said, you don't have a ton of horsepower, you don't have a ton of torque, but with it being concentrated lower in the RPMs, you do get a really fun riding experience. In the city, it's not gonna be an issue, but one of the things I have found is that I end up shifting rather quickly through the gear. So you can see I'm going 50 miles an hour here indicated, and I'm already in fifth gear. So that's a, that's a pretty decent amount of shifting uh, for not going a, a lot of speed. All right, we'll see if we get a clear shot after this turn and I can show you guys how punchy that low end torque is. Oh, perfect. Yeah, see, that's where it gets fun. <laughs> All right, we need to slow on down. Uh, but guys, when you're at a stop right here, uh, I do feel like my legs are kind of up more. I got to pull them up to get them down on the ground. But once your feet are on the ground, the bike's less than 400. You can like wiggle this thing all around. It's not going to take any energy moving this thing around your garage or anything like that. So that's going to be one of the big pluses for uh, a smaller bike like this. It just makes it easy, man. Those big old bikes are a lot sometimes. Actually, the Harley that I rode a couple uh, weeks ago is literally heavier than two of these motorcycles. <laughs> How nuts is that? I think it's like 830 pounds. This thing is uh, 397. That's actually insane to think about. So guys, as we get going here, uh, we can talk about the suspension on city streets. And that soft suspension is going to feel fantastic. Going over potholes, you guys see the route we take during the first rides there is stuff all over the road but the mix of that soft suspension and the really soft seat it makes for an incredibly comfortable ride regardless of the kind of road conditions that you're dealing with so i do appreciate that and this is not a motorcycle you're gonna buy to like go do hard riding with so if the suspension is going to be hard or soft i would rather it be soft and be more comfortable for uh, scenarios like this I don't know why you're breaking going into a green, but we'll just pop around. As you guys can see, for city pace, plenty of power. You can just jump around traffic. All of the power is going to be focused down low. Just don't rev it out too much. All right, guys, we are on a low CC bike, and we are coming up to the highway, and I've got no modes to put this thing in. So I don't know what the 40 to 80 pull is going to look like, but I, I'm not hoping for a top five. You know what I'm saying? We'll see. <laughs> we'll see all right guys y'all know what time it is we got to see how fast the 2024 triumph speed 400 will go from 40 miles an hour to 80 miles an hour thanks to our buddies over at law tigers if you guys need a motorcycle lawyer they are the ones to go with <sighs> this one's not going to be good this one's going to be rough and i'm going to have to do some stuff that i'm not really happy with on this bike to make it happen for you guys but we're going to do it anyway all right 40 to 80 on your mark Get set, go. Remember it's not shifting, it's not getting all the way up in the RPMs. I'm gonna run into that car. There it is, <laughs> Oh, Chris, let me know the time, let me know the time. That was actually faster than I expected it to be. There have been other bikes in uh, recently that did not do too good. So I'm glad to see the little single can do it. Alrighty guys, let's do the highway. So first impressions here on the highway, I'm going, I have to go 75. I can't even go 80 because the, uh, the revs are peaking. So we're going to stick at 75. I can already feel that I'm getting blown around quite a bit on this highway, I'm trying to keep the speed down, but keep up with traffic. Another thing I'm noticing is if I look in my rear, I don't know if you guys can notice, I cannot tell what vehicles are coming up behind me because these mirrors are shaking so much. Uh, I can feel the shaking in my feet and in my hands. I would say uh, out of 10, it's probably like a six or a seven level shake. It's not unnoticeable and I can almost feel it in my feet or in my butt. I'm not surprised by that. It is a low CC single. If any bike was gonna shake at higher RPMs, it's one of these, so I'm not too surprised. As far as the power on the highway, I've still got enough to like get up with traffic. And if I could get a higher RPM, it would be okay, but just don't expect to be moving through traffic very quickly on the highway. This is definitely not a bike that I would recommend for highway use. Uh, now that we're lower in the RPMs, the shaking is very much gone. So it's only when you're really revving the bike out that it's gonna rev a lot like that. 
Now, as you guys can tell, we don't have cruise control. We don't have any uh, rider aids or anything like that. I will say the throttle is very light, so it's easy for my hand to hold it open. So I don't really have a problem with that. And no surprise, the wind is all up on you. There's nothing blocking the wind here. Honestly, my phone on the quad lock is blocking more wind than anything. Uh, so you're gonna feel all the wind and you're upright. So that wind is gonna push you back a little more. Overall, I'd say you guys would probably be good for about 30 minutes to an hour commuting on this thing before it started getting tiring. So just keep that in mind. And as long as you keep it a slower pace with traffic, you should be okay. So guys, I'm gonna continue fighting this wind on the highway, but we're gonna listen to some music thanks to our buddies over at Cardo. If you guys need a Bluetooth the helmet communicator to either talk with your buddies or listen to music while you ride, I have to listen to music while I ride. You guys can use our discount code in the description down below and get you a Cardo for a little bit cheaper. But I'll be right back. That's it for the highway on the Speed 400. Thank goodness. This is not a place that this bike likes to be. Also, thank you, Cardo, for sponsoring the First Ride Show. You guys think Cardo's from our links down below helps us so much. And it doesn't cost you anything. And it's a discount. So win-win for literally everybody, guys. All right, let's get her leaned over, see how she feels. Very light, tips in really decently. I will say it, the bike does feel like I'm wiggling around a little bit. This is where that soft suspension is. It's not gonna help you out. So you get the comfort of, uh, you know, it soaking up all the bumps. But then when you get the bike leaned over, I just wanna feel a little more secure in the turn. Uh, but do I? Will, would I sacrifice a little bit of the soft comfort for that? I'm not really sure. Alrighty guys, uh, so overall, this engine for the highway can it do it? Absolutely. This bike's got no problem getting up to 90, probably almost 100 once it gets broken in. But it's not an engine that's going to be fun for the highway. And the suspension is going to make far more sense in a kind of relaxed position, riding around town and stuff like that. Once you start pushing that suspension, I think you're going to get to a limit relatively quickly. So just keep that in mind if you're choosing this motorcycle. Like, you know, keep in mind the style of riding you want to be riding in. Now, moving on to the transmission, it is a lower CC bike, it is torquey, and what I find myself doing is shifting rather quickly. That keeps my RPMs low, and it keeps me like more in the power band. So that's something to keep in mind. You will be very engaged in shifting the bike up and down. You guys can see I'm going 50 miles an hour in fifth gear here, so lots of shifting is going on. But I kind of like that, especially on the lower CC bikes. It makes you engaged. It makes you do stuff. If you're on one of the bigger bikes, bro, you get in second gear and you, you literally never have to leave second gear for the majority of the riding in the city. So uh, I find the smaller bikes a little more fun to ride when you're in a, a slower speed environment or a city environment. Now, as far as actually shifting the gears, I've had uh, no issues shifting the gears on this bike. I get a pretty good click when I click up through the gears and I've never had any issues getting into a uh, neutral or first or anything like that. So gear wise, feels pretty good, got no complaints. I, uh, I have nothing of want in that department. So guys, coming up here, we're gonna uh, lay on the brakes and see how it does. We do have ABS on this model, which I very much appreciate, especially for new riders. And as long as nobody's behind me, let's see how she'll do. Woohoo! Uh, okay, so I did slide forward on the seat before I, uh, I rolled into the gas tank and came to a stop. <laughs> but the brakes are solid. Yeah, I'm actually impressed with the brakes with that single rotor up front. I, for some reason, I come into these bikes that only have a single front rotor, and I'm like, oh man, that thing's not gonna stop enough. And then I really hammer on the brakes. Psych! And they work just fine. It's always, I, I don't know, it's like a, an expectation I have that's just massively incorrect or something. Who knows? Alrighty guys, uh, let's talk about the cluster up here. It is a Triumph. I have high expectations. Even though it's a Triumph coming in at less than $5,000. Five, 
Uh, 4995, I believe, is the MSRP. Uh, so, uh, first off, the controls is where I can tell it's a lower cost Triumph. Typically, the Triumphs have a very high price point, but you get what you pay for. You get that premium uh, experience with the controls. You can tell that's not here. You can tell that by the switch housings, the switches themselves. Now, I will note everything is working fine. I get clicks when I press stuff. Uh, I have no problem with them because I, I understand this is a less than $5,000 motorcycle. So I'm not expecting like really premium stuff, but it is a Triumph, so I kind of want it. So I don't even know what I'm trying to say. It, it, do I understand why they feel like this? Yes. Do I still want it to be premium regardless of the cost? Also, yes, for some reason. Now, the grips are a little slippery. I'm a little surprised by those. I'd probably swap those out. I think the mirrors are great and they work fantastic. I can maneuver them all over the place. They're easy to maneuver. That's great. I do like the physical speedo with the needle going up. That's cool. And then we've got an old school dash, which gives us our information. We've got the gas gauge, we've got the tack, we've got all that kind of stuff, the gear indicator. A lot of that stuff is fine. You know, there's nothing to really write home about, which in a market where there's now a 390 Duke with a beautiful TFT dash, I don't know. I don't know where to think about this. I like the Speedo, I got no problem with that, but I wish I had a TFT additional dash. But again, I'm trying to remember the price point. $5,000 is not a lot for what you are getting here. In a minute, we're gonna do a little walk around of this bike because I do feel like there's a lot of Triumph detail here. It's just not in the dash. Also, the levers, not adjustable. I appreciate they're, they're, um, they are blacked out. I mean, you can adjust this lever a little bit, but you can't adjust where the lever sits. I don't really expect that on a bike of this price point, but it is something to note. They feel good, they're really light, so if you like a light lever, you're gonna be in a good spot. Uh, they don't take a lot, and <laughs> we had this issue on a, a bike previously. The front brake lever engages quite well. As you guys can see, that's me fully engaging the lever, and I've got room for my fingers. So I do really appreciate that. I don't remember what bike it was recently, but I could pull the lever all the way to the grip. I'm not a fan of that. Also, it is nice that we have uh, hazards on this bike. Not every bike has hazard lights, and uh, it's nice to include that. Also, guys, what do you think about my new jacket? Got it in the other day, super stoked on it, and uh, hope you guys think it's cool because I think it's awesome. What is it? I don't know. Check the comments down below where we, uh, we always post what the gear is that I ride in the videos. Now look guys, I know y'all been looking at our cool camera car footage this whole video, but we're gonna pull off up here and do a little walk around of the bike. Also, thank you to all the sponsors that support this show. That is how we do that awesome camera car footage. So if you guys can support them whenever possible, it is a massive help to us. And we really appreciate you guys to do that. All right, boys, let's do a little walk around. The little bikes are always fun to just ride hard. It makes you appreciate getting to be engaged with your motorcycle. Because sometimes us guys with like leader bikes, we're just riding around at first and second. We don't interact with the bike at all. <laughs> and then you guys with these tinier bikes are over here just like, oh, boom, boom, through a parking lot. <laughs> a lot of fun can be had with a low CC bike. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. If they are, they're jaded and a piece of shit. I'm just kidding. CCs does not equal fun is what I'm trying to say. Alrighty. Oh my God. Run. There are people having in that car. I'm going to ride away now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here is the Triumph Speed 400. It's got this awesome blue. I love the blue. I think Triumph's paint jobs are so fantastic. And this is where Triumph held all of their premium features that you're going to expect out of a Triumph. Fantastic paint job. It's got attention to detail everywhere. You get the header coming all along the side of the bike. This bike looks fantastic from the side. And Triumph's been doing this kind of like partial logo on the gas tank for a while. I love it. It's always my favorite when they do that. And if you guys notice, we actually have the chain on this side. So uh, that's our Speed 400, guys. 
I love the look. I love that you can get a motorcycle for that kind of price and it still look like that fit and finish out of a Triumph. Uh, super fantastic. That's one of my non-negotiables. If I was going to buy a Triumph, I don't care what price it came in at. If it didn't look like a Triumph, you know, I wouldn't want to be able to recommend it. Because, like, I feel like that's what Triumph is. Fit and finish and that cool classic look. Obviously, this fits in with the design of all of their other speeds, so I really appreciate that. Overall, for the price, I'm loving the looks on this. I think this is the best bike of this design that you can get for that price point. Now, of course, we all know we're going to buy this bike and chop this thing off pretty quick. But, uh, overall, not too bad. Uh, so, guys, what I'm going to do is grab my phone off of my quad lock, if I can get my little finger in there. And we're going to record some content for our people over on Instagram and TikTok. We're at C2DubPix on Instagram, and we are at Chase on Two Wheels on TikTok. I'm going to record some stuff for them, and I'll be right back. Alrighty, guys, that's it for the vertical content and the car left. I don't know if we're showing you guys, but the two people in the back of the car did not get out. They climbed through the middle console, got in the car, and they drove off as a child was walking over here oh god okay we're gonna move on guys it's time to figure out is it a purchaser pass and yes the gas tank is weird purchaser pass and who is this bike for after we do a steering stem lock test our church parking lot has been disgraced my friends Ugh, disgraceful what do you make of the entire thing well what i make of it is that he's a disgrace and there's no way to slice that. I can't excuse the kind of behavior that he has exhibited. It's absolutely positively embarrassing. He should be ashamed of himself. His family should be ashamed of him. His friends should be ashamed of him. And nobody should condone this kind of behavior because when you look at it, you can talk about whether it was orchestrated or not or whatever. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. All right, here we go. I would say kind of middle of the middle of the pack, not crazy, not crazy good, not crazy bad. Uh, kind of middle of the road. Man, that single will punch, man. All right, guys, time to leave the sacrilegious parking lot. All righty, my friends. Now we have to decide, is it a purchase or a pass for the Speed 400? Now, for me, I'm really amped up for the Scrambler 400, so, I think I would have a better time on the Scrambler 400, so I'm going to go with pass on this one, only because I really love the looks of the Scrambler, and I haven't got to ride that yet, so that could, I'm hoping that's a purchase, basically. Now, the question is, just because it's a pass for me, that doesn't mean it's not right for other riders. So, who is this bike for? Now, the single is a little punchy, and there's no rider modes, but there is ABS, and because of that, I'm going to recommend a brand new rider because one, the bike's MSRP is brand new, very understandable. 4995 that is a very approachable price point to get you in the Triumph, you know, ecosystem. Also, you get the looks of Triumph's speed line for an incredible value. This is a solid motorcycle and the torque down low is going to get you having fun and the lack of top end power i think is going to keep you safe so i really love this bike for a beginner motorcycle if you're looking for something to introduce yourself to riding the weight is really light so if you start to fall over with the bike you can catch it very easily the suspension is soft so you're going to be comfortable while you ride it's an upright body position so you're going to be in control very easily and because of all of that, I think it just kind of lends itself to being, one, a fantastic city bike, but also a great bike for people to start on, especially if you're a fan of the Triumph look. I don't know, like, why would you go with anywhere else? You might as well get the lower CC Triumph and get a little taste. Now, the way I feel about this bike is you. the only thing, if you buy this bike, the only thing non triumphy you're going to get is the Triumph normal level of fit and finish. You will not get that to the normal degree that you would get on other bigger Triumphs, but I do kind of like the idea of you buy this bike to start riding, you get the fit and finish externally, like on the bike, you ride this for a year, maybe two, maybe three, 
and your next bike is a bigger triumph because then you're going to get all the fit and finish on the controls and you're going to be like oh shoot i got the upgrade so i think because of that if you're a fan of triumph looks this is the bike you start on and then you get to lead into even more triumph goodies on uh later triumphs that you get at least that's my opinion and guys, I gotta give a shout out to Triumph in Roswell. That is where we borrowed this motorcycle. If you guys wanna check them out, we're gonna have a link in the description for bike provided by. We really appreciate being able to work with those guys because they are letting us get on way more Triumphs for you guys. So if you guys are looking for a Triumph motorcycle in the Atlanta area, they are the ones to check out. Love the people there. They're fantastic to work with. I know you guys are gonna have an awesome time. And all of the merch in there, I basically want to have. I want my entire wardrobe to look like it came out of a Triumph dealer. I think I would get some cool points if I had that. Anyways, guys, that's all I got for the uh, Speed 400 here. If you guys got to this point in the video, make sure to like the video. We really appreciate that, and it helps us out a ton. And let me know, if you're going for a low CC motorcycle, are you looking at this, or are you looking at something else? And if you are, let me know what it is and why. Uh, if you got to this point in the video, you're in the outro crew, so make sure to put OC in your comment down below when you're telling me about your low CC choices. I'm Chase on the wheels. You guys go out there and ride safe, and I'll see you on the next one. Later. All right, I made it, and now I can. Who gets in the back of your car and f in a church parking lot? Oh my God, my eyes! I want to cut them out. Jeez, man, nuts. Nuts.